Hello, um, I'm Kazu Yamamoto, Internet Initiative Japan. Uh, today, I would like to share my experience on network protocol programming in Haskell. So background, uh, over seven years, I have developed several network protocols in Haskell, including anti-spam technology, DNS, two version of HTTP and TLS 1.3. Uh, my mission in our company is to contribute to standardization of network protocols, and I'm one of the maintainers of the network library in Haskell. So why Haskell? Um, roughly speaking, Haskell is a statically typed programming language, and in my opinion, Haskell is suitable for highly concurrent network programming thanks to lightweight threads, rich immutable data types, strong type system, and software transactional memory. Uh, other languages provide some features, but Haskell provides everything I want. So let me uh, explain each feature in order. Uh, first, lightweight threads. The flagship, flagship compiler of Haskell is GHC, which stands for Glasgow Haskell Compiler. G is not new. Uh, GHC provides lightweight threads. Uh, in this picture, uh, this picture uh, illustrates architecture of GH GHC's lightweight threads. Uh, one, in one process, multiple OS threads are running, and each OS thread occupies its core. And in one OS thread, multiple lightweight threads are running. The overhead of a lightweight thread is about one kilobyte, so we can run many, many lightweight threads at the same time. And what really nice is they can even migrate to another low load core. So let me pick up HTTP 1.1 as an example to explain the usage of lightweight, lightweight threads. Um, recently, server programmer avoid to use OS thread programming because context switch between kernel and the user land is heavy. So people tend to use event-driven programming for performance reasons. But in event-driven programming, code needs to be divided into some hundred, sorry. Uh, hmm? Some hundreds, oops. Okay. And uh, state needs to be maintained explicitly. Uh, this is, in my opinion, troublesome, but Lightweight thread programming is straightforward. Uh, the common tactics to implement a simple application protocol is one lightweight thread per connection. So one lightweight thread is spawn for one connection, and we can write the sequence of um, what we want. In this HTTP 1.1 example, we just write the receiver request from client and pass it to web application and send back to client and repeat this procedure. It is really straightforward and easy to maintain. <coughs> so next is the rich data types. Um, Haskell provides integrated data types, which is some of product with recursion. Uh, sorry, PDF color is not good, <laughs> but uh, uh, this uh, example is a tree structure which can be used as a set. Um, thanks to type variable, uh, in this case, A, uh, this tree can contain any kind of type. It's kind, kind of uh, generics. And uh, this uh, tree data type consists of leaf and node, and the node cons contains uh, an element and a pair of trees recursively. What is important is that each member has a tag, in this case, leaf and a node. And thanks to these tags, 
we can cover all possible values with case syntax. It's really nice. And Haskell provides strong type system. Uh, each piece of Haskell code is, is an expression. Uh, types of expression can be checked in two ways. Uh, look, look at expression for plus and uh, type of this expression can be checked from uh, by how the, this expression composed from the inside and by how it is used for outside. And Haskell also provides a syntax for a sequence of statements, but surprisingly, it is just a syntax sugar of expressions. So um, it is converted to the uh, expression. So two-way type checking can be also applied to a sequence of statements. So with rich data types, the strong type system of Haskell detects many errors at compile time. If Haskell code compiles, the code works as if uh, as its programmer intends in many cases. Uh, debugging phase is really short. It's a really good, good feature. So let's go back to data types. Uh, most of data types in Haskell are immutable. This means they are thread safe automatically. Uh, in this example, we are trying to insert letter O to tree we defined before. And when inserting letter O, new, sorry, new nodes are created to make a new tree. And the original tree uh, is not modified. And many parts are shared by two trees. And this kind of immutable data can be treated as a mutable data with mutable references. And what's nice is a single mutable reference can be changed atomically without locking. This is very good for performance. But uh, thread may use multiple variable and need to, need to update them in consistent manner. Other language use multiple locks for this purpose, but multiple locks sometimes result in the data lock. Um, this is an example of banking system, and left by try to transfer amount of money from a template to a account B, and right side uh, transfer money from uh, in the opposite direction. If, uh, Locks occur in this order, it will happen. So, um, common solution to avoid the data lock is decide the total order of variable. In this case, account A should be locked before account, a, uh, account B. Uh, but this approach is troublesome and sometimes impossible. So, Haskell provides software transactional memory, STM. STM is deadlock free because STM is a mechanism to make multiple locks to a single. Uh, the usage of STM is very simple. Just write a sequence of what we want to do, like uh, and wrap it, wrap it by atomic function. That's it. So STM actions are re retried until they succeed, like SQL transaction. Uh, what good is Haskell type system ensure that side effect in STM action can be rolled back. This means retries are safe. Missiles are never launched. Okay, so let me pick up HTTP2 as an example to explain the usage of STM. Uh, okay. HTTP2 is a redesign of the transport layer while it keeps HTTP 1.1 semantics such as HTTP headers. 
uh, only one TCP connection is used between browser and the server, and multiple requests and responses are transported. Uh, the order of response is not guaranteed. They can be flipped. Um, so to implement HTTP2, the common tactic, one lightweight thread per connection cannot be used. So I needed to introduce several threads and uh, some variables. And uh, I, this is the architecture of my implementation of HTTP2. And I don't want to de uh, explain in detail in this e uh, presentation, but uh, what I want to say is I can guarantee that this system is deadlock free thanks to STM. So, uh, so you may are uh, interested in the performance of my web server, so, but uh, t time is running out, so I skip the benchmark environment slides and just show you on a, a result. Uh, this chart show you that um, my, uh, so, And what access is number of utilized ports, and what access is a throughput request per second. And I compare the Haskell and NGX, both in HTTP2 and HTTP1.1. And as you can see, um, my server in Haskell is on par with NGX, in, at least in specific case. And it is very difficult to compare with server fairly, but I, what I want to say with this chart is Haskell is not slow as you may expect. So Haskell is very good for network bound programs. So if you are uh, interested in programming Haskell for network, uh, the next step is to read this excellent book uh, written by Simon Morrow who is the author of GHC. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Can you talk about your experience uh, profiling and uh, you know, getting the performance to, uh, to this uh, level that you showed? This ah, yeah. Uh, GHC has a profiler, so if you Mm, specify one option to compile time. We can uh, we can analyze the performance of you know uh, Haskell code. Sure, but I mean, you know, how many iterations does it take you with the help of the profiler to get the right performance? Or was it good from the beginning? I, I don't un understand you are. Okay. Maybe it's Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 So, first of all, I'm not a big fan of lazy evaluation, <laughs> and luckily, recently we have a language program to turn the default strategy to strict evaluation, so you don't have to use lazy evaluation at all. Oh, really? Yeah. And but there is two good uh, application of, of lazy evaluation. One is list programming and the other one is oops. It's a uh, yeah, it's a language program. So you just uh, put it in, into the file. And uh, Variable automatically, so we need a cat compare the swap and with this modification operation. 
that this job is really heavy. So CAT may help fail if we use strict evaluation. But we can use lazy evaluation in Pascal. So we quickly create a pending job and build the compare stuff. We're going to have to leave it there. <laughs> and then then uh, do the pending job lazy. That is very good uh, example. Lazy Do you have a poster this afternoon? Hmm? Do you have a poster this afternoon? Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, so there's, there'll be lots of opportunity to follow up on that. Thanks once again. <laughs>